One, two. <laughs> yeah, we got one, two. Oh, it's a multi kill. I can't believe I struggled so much with the airburst in the beginning. It's really an awesome weapon. The ability to take out unlimited number of enemies behind cover is so underrated. <laughs> but seriously, I'm really proud that I managed to tame this weapon, and I figured that if you watch this video, you will be prolific too. In addition, I will talk about the forgotten ability of Zane, something that makes him the master of the assault class. He's so underrated. Sure, he doesn't jump around like an AK or fly like Sundance, but he's basically invincible. You can't compete with that, can you? <laughs> First of all, let's talk about his gadget, the Airburst, or the much more boring XM370. I mean, let us numbers, who cares about them anyway? Airburst, yeah, that's easy to remember. Then we'll get back to how you actually play this thing later on. So imagine a normal gun or rifle, you fire a bullet and that bullet hits an object, like a coconut or a human head. The velocity of the bullet then causes massive damage or death. And everyone is happy, except the target. This is all wrong when it comes to the airburst. You have to unlearn this. Because that way of thinking won't work. The airburst fires a projectile, and after a certain distance, that projectile explodes in the air, causing a bloom that deals damage to everything around it. You can fire it at an object as well, and that will cause a minor explosion, but it's really not efficient at all. It's not that kind of weapon. You need to unlearn that crap. When you aim down sight at something, the Abbas will automatically set the range. Most of the time you just know it, but you can also check the two bars to right to confirm. The right one shows the distance to whatever you are aiming at, and the left one shows the set range for the projectile. As you can see, if you keep holding ads, the range for the projectile doesn't change. Not until you press V or whatever button you see on the right. It will then renew the range to wherever you are aiming. This is important because most of the time you will be setting the range manually. But we'll come back to that later when talking about how to actually play this thing. As soon as you have your desired range, just shift the aim slightly off target, fire and watch the bloom cause damage to all the enemies hiding behind cover. Normally, if you hit two, you need three hits to kill one or many targets. There is really no limit to how many you can damage or kill at once, and there is no hiding. There is a counter though, but we we'll get back to that later as well. When you spawn, you have two clips of five rounds each, ten in total. This is the maximum amount of ammunition that you can carry for the airburst. Usually, this is more than you need. You can't pick up new ammo from boxes or anything. It's automatically regenerated. The cooldown starts as soon as you reload your airburst rifle. So as soon as your second clip isn't full. And this is actually great because it means that it's very easy to manage your ammunition. You will always have new rounds to fire. Exactly how you do this? Well, you, you guessed it later in the section where I describe how you actually play this thing. I've already mentioned some about the range, but I think there is some more that you should know in order to be effective. The maximum range of the Abbas is 100 meters. If you try to set your range too far, or if you hip fire, that is the default range that it falls back to. It means that either the airburst will bloom in front of the enemy, doing no harm, or it will blow up on impact, in which case it does much less damage. So the key is to use either ads at the right target, or preferably the manual range key to set the exact right range, so the bloom can do as much damage as possible. Sometimes you have to be a bit creative to find something at the right distance. We've all been waiting for this. Let's go into the details of how you actually play this thing. As with all other gadgets, weapons or toys in Battlefield 242, there are a number of ways to play them. Eventually, you will find your own way, but 
by looking at how I do it, hopefully you can get some important keys to mold into the best you. <laughs> that sounded a bit greasy, to be honest. I mean, just learn here. And then you can go on and you can do whatever you want. I don't really care. Uh, or I do care, actually. If you do like me, it will be great. If you actually do mold it into your own playing style, then it can be either magnificent or a third on the ground. Anyhow, the first and foremost thing is to get control of your ammunition management. This doesn't mean that you always should have spare armor or anything, but you should only start to fire at the target that you know you have enough ammo to kill. Think about it. You have five rounds in a clip, but you only need three to kill. I generally use the first and the second round to probe my range. If neither hits, I reload before trying again. Or if I'm really positive, I might end up trying a third time. If three rounds doesn't hit, there's no reason to continue firing. It's actually quite stupid. Unless they already taken fire, you won't be able to kill. And the time it takes for you to reload, or even worse, wait for the cooldown, in that time, they can either heal up or rotate away from the position. Doing early reloads will ensure that by the time you finish your second clip, there will either be five rounds left in total since before, or you have already been refilled by cooldown. This is an easy way to manage ammunition, which is based mostly on being effective and killing your targets, but with the side effect that you would never run dry. Uh, and also remember that you can see how long there is before you get a refill, so if it's another second, well, just wait. There is a counter to the airburst that you should be aware of. The Irish box shoot down airburst projectiles as they are projectiles. This prevents any damage from the airburst and it's shown by this blue hit marker. As soon as you see any of those, stop firing and find a new target or wait a few seconds and try once again. If there is only one Irish box, it has a fairly long cooldown window that you can hit. But if there are two or more, it's now impossible to penetrate with airburst. You can try a slightly different angle or position, but it's not worth dishing out a lot of ammo hitting nothing but air. When you play the map for a certain time, you start to learn where people move, what covers people like to use. When playing the air burst, eventually you learn which covers you can fire around and what you should use to set your range. I, I know that many think that you just aim for the cover and then you, you hit everything, but it's not really that easy. For, for instance, enemies may take a small distance to the cover to avoid being hit by the airburst or other explosives that can injure them. The airburst bloom isn't very deep, so sometimes small adjustments in range can do wonders. Uh, you can often use the minimap to confirm where enemies are and then it's all about being creative and finding the right range. Also remember that you don't need to show much of yourself to fire an airburst, but when you do, you really have tunnel vision. And since the range disappears or needs reset every time you exit the ads, it's not really a weapon you want to fire once and then start looking around with no ads. That's a technique that you can use as a sniper, but you can't really do it with Sane with uh, airburst. Oh yes, the secret of Sane. Uh, we, we are finally here at the end. and. It's time to talk about his ability. You know, the abilities of the specialists are quite often forgotten. At least the passive ones. I mean, everyone remembers that Sanders can fly or McKay can use his grapple hook. But you remember the passive abilities like Irish revives giving extra ammo or Angel giving armor when reviving players. Like the other assault class specialists. Saiyan has a rather egocentric passive ability. Whenever you kill a target, you will hear a heartbeat. And you see this sort of adrenaline flash of colors and blur on your screen. It's the passive ability, named Perseverance. And it causes Saiyan to recover health much faster than other players. Once you get the groove of it, as long as you kill enemies and take short breaks to reload your weapon, you will basically have full health all the time. If in a dire situation you just a small moment in cover, you can even use the med pen that they always carry as a result of being assault. His survivability is really quite impressive. He's basically like Falk, but he doesn't have to fiddle around with some needles and of course he can't use that ability to help other players. As a result, he's the fully focused ultimate assault soldier. And as you now learned, 
he can always blast enemies out of their covers without putting himself at huge risks. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please throw in the thumbs up it really helps and it makes me happy for another day. Also make sure to subscribe to get more videos like this. Cheers!